Hey, I'm Johnny Wilson with ePlan USA, and today let's go through the top five questions that were submitted to the ePlan Solution Center in July 2020. Number five, I cannot find my alignable accessory in my parts database. So I'm going to add some alignable accessories to this terminal strip here. So I'm going to select this terminal strip in the terminal navigator here. So let's go to right click and go to edit. And if I select the terminal I want to edit and go to add alignable accessory, I can see I've got three different accessories I can select from. The part number I am wanting to, to look for is this EBJ16. And as you can see, it is not being found in this alignable accessory list. So this is because a property has not been enabled to tell ePlan to use this as an alignable accessory. So to do this, we can go to our parts management. So go to utilities, parts, and then management. I'm just going to look for the part. So this is this EBG 16. And if I go to properties, if I check this alignable box here, click apply and then close. It's going to ask me to synchronize the parts database. I'm going to hit yes. So now when I go to edit the terminal strip, and add the alignable accessory. You can see I'm going to have this EBJ16 here. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, the accessory has now been aligned, and I can move the position up and down depending where the accessory needs to be placed. Number four, I've assigned a part to a cable, but the conductors are no longer in the correct order. How do I correct this? I'm going to assign a part number to this cable. So let's go to right click and go properties and then use the device selection and I'm going to use this cable here. As we can see we have four conductors in total with numbers one through three and then a green and yellow for the ground. I'm going to assign the cable using this arrow as I can see all the functions have been assigned. I'm going to click OK and let's hit apply and let's hit OK. As you can see the numbers for the conductors of the cable have been assigned to each wire, but it looks like it's ordered them incorrectly. So why is this? If we have a look at the terminal strip that this cable is connected to, we can see it goes one through four in the numbering scheme, but let's take a closer look. So if you look at this terminal strip, we can see the order of it goes one, three, two, and then four. So let's correct that by going to right click and edit and what we can do is sort the terminal strip based on numeric values here. And then we can hit apply. And now to update the cable, what we can do is go to the cable navigator. And then we can right click on our cable and go to assign cable connections and reassign all. Once we do this, we get the correct sequence of conductors. Number three, how do we create a title page and how do we edit that title page? So first I'm gonna create a title page by going to Utilities, Reports, and then Generate. I'm gonna use this new button here, and then I'm gonna select Title Page slash Cover Sheet. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna use this drop down here to browse for the title page I want to use. So this is the form we're gonna be using. And let's hit Open, and let's click OK. And page name one will work for this, so let's hit OK. And then once we've done that, we can use this Generate Report button here. So once I've done that, I now have a title page. So to edit this, what we can do is go to Utilities, Master Data, Form, and then Open. What I want to do is use the form that I selected earlier and click Open. And what I can do is start editing this form. So to replace this image, I can go to insert, graphic, and image file. And I'm gonna look for a new image here. So I'm gonna use this ePlan USA image. I'm gonna copy it over. And I'm just gonna place it here. Click OK. I'm gonna get rid of the old one. And now when I close this form, it's gonna ask me to synchronize so I hit yes, and now you can see it's automatically updated my form to be this new 
image. Number two, we find a part that's not in our database. How do we create it on the fly? So let's go to insert and then symbol. And I want to use this fuse holder here. Click, click OK. I'm going to place it here. And then I want to look at the symbol and function data. As you can see, we're using this particular symbol and has been assigned a safety fuse as the definition. So let's go to the parts tab and give it a new part number. So I'm going to give it ESS for ePlan Software and Services and call it this part number here and click OK. Once we've done that, we can right click on the device and go to generate part. It's going to open our parts database where we can fill out all of the information we need for this part number. If we look at the function tab, you can see that it's adopted the function template that was assigned to the symbol. So let's press apply and close. We have now successfully created the part. So if I go to insert a device and I search for that part number, I can now insert it into my schematic. And as you can see, it's got the assigned parts data that I filled out earlier. So number one, if we download a part from the data poll and we do not like the macro, how do we quickly and efficiently edit that macro? So I've got to download a part from the data portal. Just search for the part quickly. Use this button here to import it into our parts database. So I want to update anything that exists in my system and then close the data portal. I'm going to insert the part I just downloaded so I can search for that IA16 here and then click OK. So when I'm placing it in my schematic, I can see that ePlan is prompting me and telling me to use variant E. If I hit the tab key, I can cycle through all the different variants. So here's variant I, and then back to A, B, and then finally back to E. So if I don't want to use any of these variants, I can hit the backspace key and then select individual functions. So by doing this, it's going to look at all the individual functions that have been assigned to this particular part and then run through them as I place them. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm just going to draw my first point of this PLC box. So I'm just going to draw it out here, and then it's going to allow me to place all the PLC connection points here. So I'm going to quickly place them all. So once I've placed all the inputs, I can right click on the PLC box and go to synchronize selection. So looking in the device navigator, it's going to show me that all the PLC inputs have been placed on a multi-line. So what I can do is drag a box over everything and right click and create window macro. So I want to give this a name and I'm going to call it ESS underscore AB and then click OK. So if I double click on this part, I'll go to properties and look at the part number here and use these three ellipses, we can navigate over to the technical data and we can look at the macro that was assigned to this part. So using these three ellipses, I'm going to use the new macro I created, as you can see here, and press open and click OK. So it's going to say, do you want to synchronize? Hit yes and then click OK. So now when I insert the part again, it's going to be using the new macro I just assigned to it. So as you can see, I'm using variant A, and this is the only variant that is created right now.